13 days, ladies and gentlemen. 13 days. I'm proud to say. Uh, 13 days in a row without a freak out. And I feel like today, today's a good chance that I'm going to make it 14 days in a row without a single freak out. I want to make a note, by the way, something you might see underneath. I put this on uh, yesterday's show, and it'll appear. You see at various points. You see underneath there, there there underneath where it says content free to use so long as Frico and Frico.com are identified as the creators. Just take a note of that. So if you want to mirror my stuff on your glorious, awesome channel with your gazillion followers and you make a gazillion dollars off of my video, as long as you've credited me, I don't care. Go ahead. Make money off of me if you want. As long as you make sure everybody knows that I created it. I don't really care because I live by the IP. I die by the IP. So to speak. All right. With that in mind, let's get ready for the show. Let's make our transition on over. What are we talking about today, ladies and gentlemen? What exactly are we talking about today? You know, I really need. You know what? Hold on one second. Yeah. Well, you know what? Never mind. I don't care. Let me tell you what the show's about. <clears throat> today, we're going to talk about the mind is the belly and the belly is the mind. Black woman dead, black man charged after cops know not kill and wound. Neck tattoos that read your mind. The White House threatens to liberate research from paywalls, but it's just a tease. My digital Zen newscaster just exploded on live state TV. Where do we get these stories? Well, we get these stories from our feeder sites that we, uh, I run. Newsalike.com, the glitz, the odd, the under the radar, the hard to believe news at a glance. It's not feeder sites, link aggregate sites. That's what I'll call them. That's what they are. Then we get to Obamacare.tv, free market social engineering for the masses. And finally, 
pioneeringnews.com, tech, science, underground news links, and I assemble linkages from there in my little Intel kind of way, and then I send the best of the links over here, and I assemble them together for the five stories that I'm going to put together to create our news art for the day, which is No Knocking Our Way to Safety. That's No Knocking Our Way to Safety for Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. All right. Take a little bit. <clears throat> a little bit of a pause here, and uh, let's get uh, let's get the warning out of the way. How about we do that? We didn't do our warning, and we need to do the warning before we continue. Warning: The material you're about to be exposed to is warning the minds of individuals who are limited in their capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in life are young. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, and gospel or scientific groups, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your prior interview with the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firm and held. We do not apologize for anyone we have we do not apologize for daring to express our views and questions about what we believe is and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. That's the plan. That's always the plan. If I can get through the show without freaking out, it's always uh, not as good a show as it could be. <laughs> no, no, it's always a better show. Although I think some of you are just here to see... Is he going to hit the wall today? Is he going to hit the wall? Maybe he'll hit it multiple times. Maybe he'll roll over. Maybe he'll be jettisoned from the car. His body on flames. On flames? Yeah, on flames. What the heck? And then hits the fence. And Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're hoping for. Let's get to the first segment of the show. The first segment of the show is our top headlines. So let's, uh, or our talk headlines. So let's, uh, let's record that. Are you ready, everybody? Now remember, content free to use. So long as Frico and Frico.com are identified as the creators. I wonder if I should say that the beginning and or the end of every segment <clears throat> as I record it. Or every excerpt. Hmm. Food for thought. Talk Headlines. This is the Talk Headlines for Frico Talks the News on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Our headline for today, our top headline for today is The Man is the Belly and the Belly is the Man. The Man is the Belly and the Belly is the Man. I personally really love this story. And one of the reasons why I love this story is because, well, I have this theory. <clears throat> and my theory is that in time... We will come to, ref when we think of the quote-unquote mind, we will be thinking of the whole body. My suspicion is the entirety of the body has some degrees of uh, capacity for self-directed action, let's just say, and has the capacity through various means to influence other parts of the body, to exert some level of power over other parts, because power is simply the ability to influence action. So within the self, there are multiple cells, but these multiple cells, we, we usually, we understand the multiplicity of the human mind, how we have these conflicting interests within us. We all have seen multiple I'm sure multiple displays, even with our own lives, we understand the the the. the any time that you do something that you regret, that's a evidence of. Well, more often than not, it's an evidence of this this inability of our of our humanity to completely harmonize itself to go in the same direction, because you find yourself driven in action which is counter to other. I think dare I say the word, I hate the word in general, but authentically held preferences. So this story is particularly fascinating to me because I think that it, it, it offers some measure of, I won't call this proof, but, but it o opens the door to say, hey, maybe we should go a little, a little deeper into this possibility that the entirety of the body is the mind. If we come to understand the degrees to which parts of our body mind might not be by their very natures in harmony with one another, we may be able to adjust the way that we work to 
deliberately build within us the what I call the heuristic institutions. These are the patterns of reflexive action that we build up in ourselves based upon a number of factors, many of which we don't even understand. So there's this huge black box of data that's in our lives if we really want to understand humanity. And uh, <coughs> so uh, I'm, I'm just going to go with the story here. Scientists explore molecular connections between genetics, gut microbiome, and memory. A new study is among the first... Oh, this is... Did I cite this? From SciTech Daily. Okay, excerpt from SciTech Daily. Make sure I cite that. Always always give credit. Always. All, well, I won't say always. Or like even for my stuff, if you use an excerpt of my stuff in a, a montage of a whole bunch of other stuff... No, 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 you don't. I'm talking about if you use the entirety of my stuff that you would have to credit. But anyway, even when I don't use entirety, I still generally... Wherever possible, you always credit wherever you're, you're sourcing, citing. While tantalizing links between the gut microbiome and brain have previously been found, a team of researchers from two U.S. Department of Energy National Laboratories found a new evidence of tangible connections between the gut and the brain. That's great. See, I, I would expand this, of course. Uh, it's not tangible connections. It's it's the entirety. I, I, I mean, we have just discovered an organ, uh, an organ in us called the fascia. And the fascia is a thin membranic something or other that interconnects all of the essential organs within our body cavity. Now, I don't know if it's actually beyond the body cavity, but it's at least the body cavity. And I think that thing in and of itself is probably a whole... There's probably a lot of decisions being made about what you do in your life happening within the fascia, many of which there's decisions you do not consciously control. <clears throat> the team identified lactate, a molecule produced by all species of one gut microbe, as a key memory-boosting molecular messenger. The work was published recently in the journal BMC Microbiome. Our study shows that the microbiome might partner with genetics to affect memory, said Janet Jansen, a microbial ecologist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Nope. 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 We're just going with this. We're just going with this. This. And a corresponding author of the study. Scientists know that mice, which have been fed microbes that benefit health, called probiotics, experience several positive benefits. Scientists also know that microbes produce molecules that travel through the blood and act as chemical messengers that influence other parts of the body, including the brain. However, it wasn't clear which specific microorganisms and microbial molecular messengers might influence memory until now. <laughs> I don't know why that was sinister. Could be sinister. The challenge is that a mouse's unique genetic makeup and environmental conditions also impact its memory and microbiome, says Antoine Snijers. Snijers? Snijers? Snijers. I like it. I like it. I, I really like that mix of names. There's, Yeah, I love it. Antoine Snijers. I think that's a winning name there. Uh, not enough for me to put you in the uh, text notice here like I do for some stories. Sorry. Sorry. Not that big a note. But still, I like I like Snijers. I don't know if you pronounce it Snijers, but I hope you do. Because I really like that. Snijers! Snijers! Yeah, I would enjoy if I was in a class and there was a Snijer in the class. And every morning I got to hear. And I would want you to be always late. Because I would want the person to have to repeat your name every time. Snijers! Snijers! Uh, uh, uh. All right, late as usual. That that's that's what I want. A bioscientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And if you are not usually late, Snijers, so I apologize. And if that's not how you pronounce your name, I other uh, also apologize. Well, I don't apologize for mispronouncing your name. No, I do. No, I don't. No, I don't. To know if a microbial molecule influenced memory, we needed to understand the interaction between genetics and the microbiome. 
Now, I think that they need to expand right away. The sentences are there. There, so my 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 title: the mind is the belly, and the belly is the mind. I'm I'm not making a connection between the mind and the belly, the gut, the ba. I'm I'm saying that that the entirety of the body has some degrees of capacities not to influence the mind although they have the this part this part processes and builds levels of deliberative potential deliberative and potential reflexive actions but it's not the only part of the body that does that we will begin to think of the brain as a part of the mind not the mind being influenced by parts of the body this this is the transition that i hope science makes quickly if i'm right although they may know things that i don't know that would say no dude that's cute but listen you're thinking like a child and i could be because i while i love science and and tech in general and obviously you watch this show you know a lot of side tech stories on here i love what it potentially can do to help us create uh engineer if you will consensuality <laughs> i'm really happy about that but i don't i've never of all the areas in my life that i've studied in any kind of scholarly sense I've had always the most difficult time understanding science and tech. I don't, I'm, I'm a creative, artistic type, philosophizing type thinking person. So, so I could be talking out of my hat if you science and tech people listen to my theory. But my suspicion is, my strong suspicion is, because I keep seeing things like this that keep suggesting that I'm not insane. So I really hope that uh, some science tech people happen to hear some of these shows and start responding and giving me a sense of, of just how realistic some of my assumptions are, especially some key assumptions like that the whole body is the brain, the notion of creating the portable, being able to create your own portable AI buddies and if, how, how much of a game changer that could be if, if we could give that capacity to humanity if we could totally democratize the 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 democratize intelligence basically democratize wisdom counsel democratize uh, excellent knowledge of of technical skills that can be explained or or done whichever the case might be for for any individual regardless of their anything Every individual on the planet has that capacity. What a, what a game changer that would be. Imagine that. A world filled with everyone who no one could dupe anyone. Everyone's going to have to be like straight up with each other. And everyone's going to have the capacity to, to build some serious stuff to assure that you don't mess with them. It's going to be a beautiful thing. So uh, I'm going to go back to what, what Janet Jansen says here. Our study shows that the microbiome might partner with genetics to affect memory. The microbiome might partner. I love that she says might, but also wish that they had more, more understanding. But what they say here is interesting. The microbiome might partner with genetics. See, I think... I think we're going to find memory is probably also stored in a lot more places when Carl Jung talks about the collective unconscious. I think what he was recognizing was essentially the, the, the fruit of the biological passing on of memory, which I think there's been other other i don't know if we've studied it i have i've covered those stories in other iterations that i've done throughout the years but i don't think i've done that on Fre frico talks the news but i've covered other stories that have have explored the these potentials for how it is that biology seems to you you seem to be able to pass on memory biologically even like sim 
simple organ, and they have found much more proof at a measurable level for simpler celled organisms, especially single celled organisms. There seems to be some evidence for this transfer of memory biologically. So I think, I think that we have just begun to scratch the surface as far as the complex, like if you were going, if you could simulate the human mind perfectly and create a, a, a me digital mechanical version of the human mind that you can put into a robot and the robot's body was totally a robot body. I think that what we are going to find out is that that human mind, that perfect simulation of a human mind, which I don't think is possible for us to create, but just say we can hypothetically, that there's still going to be something that is not right about that robot that is clear to everyone. They won't be able to put their fingers on it. And some people will find, be able to do the math and figure out what it is. But initially, they won't be able to pin it. But they'll know. Everybody will know what a, what a robot is just by the way they act. Because what we're going to find, I believe, is it is the totality of the whole body in concert and war. There's concert and war. And the war part is probably necessary in concert and in war with one another that is uh, bringing about the the actions that you end up taking and we have just begun to scratch the surface of that but this story this exploration just brings a a little bit more uh, i'll say dare i say it dare i yeah i'll say it a little bit more credibility to some of my claims that up until now i'd say fair amount of people when I share some of my ideas just just look at me like I just suggested that they eat baby heads for breakfast something like that it's like uh, 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 uh. which is weird that we would re well, I mean if somebody was going to eat baby heads for breakfast I think I'd react a little bit worse than that but I think most human beings the initial reaction is, would be that and then then there would be stuff afterwards so at any rate the challenge is that a mouse's unique genetic makeup and environmental conditions also impact its memory and microbiome. Yeah, and that's another thing that we're going to find out. Beyond our cells, what is extended beyond us that we may be very well capable if, if memory is in the cells, we may be very capable of actually inheriting i guess you could say the memories of that which we consume that could be possible there i mean that's way out there but <laughs> but but like, there could be memory and so i don't know there this, this thing goes some wild places all kinds of sci-fi stuff that you could do with the whole notion of like if you could go into a room and literally suck up all of the of the of the cells in the room from the last 24 hours, the cells in the air from the last 24 hours, and you would have a mechanism that you would literally, like, you would literally find, because some of these cells are going to be in some degree parts of humans that floated off, and you may be able to find, like, what, you may have their memories, and the, you walk into a room, and, and I don't know how long these things would last. I'm just getting crazy here. Why not? <laughs> but you walk into a room, I don't know how long these things last, and and you could literally figure out the all of you would know all of the details of all of the lives of all of the entities that were in that room in the last 24 hours that had memory storage in them like if it was a dog cat human cockroach whatever <laughs> yeah maybe someday that will be the re reality i'm going to this weird wow privacy there should be like listen man Nobody has privacy. You can't real you know, that that'll be like what it's like. It's like we all value privacy. We all we all we all we all look, that's one thing we who knows, maybe we'll come to I mean you could come to a place where because of the fact that if if it was a fact, because of the fact that so so many humans would be so fully capable that uh having other people know that you you like to sniff your own butt uh, like, well, what are they going to do? What are they going to do about it? Everybody's like, well, I mean, yeah, it's kind of gross, but what am I going to do about it? So people will be like, 
I don't know, maybe some, I don't know where that would go. But anyway, I'll end it at that. This is about the length of this video. Actually, uh, I want to end it at 15 minutes, but this isn't bad. So this is the end of the headline segment. Coming up next is the dialectical, and the dialectical for today is a black woman dead, black man charged after cops, no knock, kill, and wound. Just a friendly little dialectical. Nothing controversial on this one. Oh, I didn't do the last end scene for this one. Bummer. I forgot to switch that scene. Oh, well. That's okay. I have added a new thing. Now I got my little transition scenes here. So got a little spot that I could slow down for a moment. Take in the sights and sounds. Take a little sippy. Sip a lip up. Let's do that. We don't have the... the we don't have the Hello Kitty water cup today because we're dealing in coffee today. So I'm going to sip on the coffee here. Just bear with me. Enjoy this chill music. All right, let's get ready for the next segment. Let's, uh, let's cue, cue this up. Three... Two, one. And this is the dialectical for Frico Talks the News on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. Our dialectical for today is Black Woman Dead, Black Man Charged After Cops, No Knock, Kill, and Wound. Thank you, Crooks and Liars, which is where we're going to get our little excerpt here today. For helping to make my case for me that the Second Amendment is a fundamental right of all Americans, including and especially disenfranchised Americans. And I'll add to that physically disadvantaged Americans, whichever Americans, whether you're a, a spindly male or a spindly female or a spindly they, if there's spindliness in your life and your diminished small spindliness, then the Second Amendment is something that is a great... The, the Second Amendment is the ideational democratizer of force. And that is especially needed by any groups that are in any type of vulnerable positions, be they small numbers of individuals facing potential threats from larger numbers of individuals or individuals who have diminished physical capacity compared to other individuals that might potentially threaten them. This is just simple physics, if you will, sort of. So... The American right gave them a bit of a gift when they went crickets on the main, with, with some exceptions, on picking up the case of Brianna Taylor. That's this beautiful young woman here, right there. And Kenneth Walker, and it doesn't matter that she, she happens to be pretty, but she does happen to be pretty, but I think it's, I don't know, I shouldn't have noted that, maybe not, but I, you know, I'm going to stick by it. She's a beautiful young woman, vital, lively, whatever, from what I've read a little bit about her. And uh, that is a woman who is no longer alive. She's no longer alive because cops decided to execute a no-knock warrant based upon some level of evidence and material that may be... I'm not going to get into the particulars of of the case as far as that goes but i will note that uh, well I'll, I'll get to it but i, I do want to note i want to hum make sure that this is the girl that you work with or your daughter or your friend this girl a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago i don't know right particularly when this happened, but uh, at no, no more than two weeks ago, was a vital member of our society. Beautiful, young, vital member of our society. She was alive and well. And now she is no more. 
And uh, Kenneth Walker is the one, after all of this, the girl is killed by cops. And the man is charged. Not the cops. The man in his home, defending his home. So, this is the case of a slain former EMT and her boyfriend who now faces charges for defending his home from cops who entered on yet another no-knock warrant gone bad. Now, let me assure you, crooks and liars, Frico has long called for the restoration of the Second Amendment rights of all Americans, including and especially right now for our Americans trapped behind enemy lines in the ghettos and other disenfranchised lands, lands where police do little to protect you from criminals with guns, but will arrest you and throw you in jail while threatening you with guns if you protect yourself from violence with guns. So I say, end the racist gun control laws. Stand with and for Breonna Taylor and Kenneth Walker. Black gun owners' lives matter. Beautiful young girl. Not with us. Because cops executed. Well, let's get to it here. This is Crooks and Liars, and I do want to say Crooks and Liars is very sensationalistic, and uh, on the scale of journalistic credibility, they rate rather low. And I do not know all the potential details in this, but I'll, well, I'll, 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 I'll unfold it here. The Breonna Taylor tragedy raises the question, do African Americans have Second Amendment rights? Of course they do. But when I see things on the right, Again, not all the right, but the majority. Again and again and again consistently. When it comes to black Americans, when they're in situations in which it's their gun rights. Philandro, I think, is one of the one of the most egregious examples where Philandro Castillo where it's pretty clear that it was a, such a such a fundamental violation of of his rights as a gun owner and this cop this cop, this cop should have been turned over to that young man's family and they could decide what to do with him. That's the way it should be. Yeah, you live by the gun, you die by the gun is what I say. And when cops do this kind of stuff, they, the family should decide what happens to the cop. When it's such a clear, egregious thing. It's got to be really clear and obvious. No grays, nothing. It's got to be real clear. In this case, pretty clear. What happened in the Philandro Casile case, that young man was murdered for being black. And he was murdered for being black because you just assume a black man with a gun that's got to be a criminal. And I believe that, that many people on the right, I don't think they're all racist, but they have r racist constructs within them that they still have yet to face. And some of those is I think they have a, 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 a heuristic institutional reaction to a black person with a gun, especially a black man with a gun that makes them tend to side with the cops. They won't side with the cops as, as readily if it's a white man. And I don't have, I'm just, this is my my instinct from the way I've seen them, them react. And again, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm as, as careful as I am when I talk about SJW authoritarianism, not to stigmatize all of SJW. I, n I don't want to do that. I don't want to stigmatize conservatism either any more than I'd want to stigmatize SJW. So I'm not saying all of the right is like this. But I do think this is one of their fundamental weaknesses. And they keep missing these opportunities. This is an opportunity we need. We Americans who support the, the who understand, I'll say, for, yeah, you don't even understand. For whatever reason that you are, there's this large group of people. And they're not just conservatives. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a progressive either, but there are progressives in this group too. There are conservatives, there's progressives. There's many folks from many different beliefs that for various reasons have come to value the usefulness of the Second Amendment as a principle for government to be limited by. There's many, many people in that group. And we in that group, we need and want desperately for black America to be a strong supporter of that group. They don't need to sign on to all the conservative crap. But this point, 
This should not be a conservative issue anymore. At this point in our lives, we Americans should fundamentally understand why, unless we're a citadelian or, or one of the powerful close vassals, we should understand by now why it is that all Americans ha- should, should have a fundamental right to steward their own force defense in the world. We should want to democratize force. Anyone who is against gun rights for individuals is anti-democratic by their very nature. You cannot say that you are a Democrat in any sense of the term, small D or large D, whatever the case might be. And, And before the absolute and total monopolization of force by a powerful select few, you can't before that. And that's your that's your fundamental disconnect with your whole if you're the party of the people, then why do you not believe? Why do you not trust the people to have the same means of of self-defense as the government? Because we are the freaking government. You know that theoretically, if we are the government, then then a, a private citizen with a gun is a government official. In point of fact, we're all government officials if, if we are of the people, by the people, for the people. And that's what I was taught. That's what I was not taught more. I was told that was the, the de facto agreement that was laid up. I didn't really give consent to that. So that's another issue. I won't get to that. But I, whatever it might be, I am kind of, I, I find myself reality of power for whatever reason at the very, at the very best cooperated into this arrangement and now you're telling me that you support the arrangement being dead you want a very distinct difference a line a fire line between the governed and the governing and that's not that's not what we were 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 signed up for that's what i'll say i didn't i didn't sign up i was signed up though that's not what we signed up for so we actually have the papers and the receipts that say when you do that kind of stuff what we actually, if, if you go, if, if, if you view, I view the Declaration of Independence as a legal and binding document. It is, it is what created the American state in the first place. So it is most assuredly part of our legal record. And that legal record right from the start says it is a citizen's duty to assure that government continues to be what government is supposed to be of the people, by the people, for the people. So anyone opposing gun laws is not of the people. Anyone opposing gun laws is not an American citizen, not, not in spirit, maybe, maybe in, in, in legalistic terms, but not in spirit. They're not an American citizen. They're much closer to China's way of thinking than America's ostensible way of thinking. And this is just another case where you, you have the right that is, I'm not, I'm not, there have been some people on the right that have actually taken this up, so I don't, this is not a broad stroke. But largely you have the right that, that's, that's, that's quiet on this because of their knee-jerk reaction to support the police. And, they're, and, and, and I believe a lot of pure, a racist type, I'm not saying they're racist, but they have racist type heuristic institutions that when you associate a black man with a gun, you're much more likely to believe, oh, there's more to this story. You'd be all over this if this was a white man with a with a church a white church wife. You'd be all over this. You'd 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 assume the best about them and the worst about the police. I don't want to assume the worst about anyone or best about anyone. I know because I I want to know the facts, but I know enough to know that these 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 no knocks are just uh, they they just they should only be used in the rarest and rarest of cases. And the reason these no knocks are increasing is because it's much safer for the, for the police to do this. Much safer. They have all the advantage, and, and they'd rather do that than risk. They elevate risk the, 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 the more directly and openly that they confront you. But they, they, they elevate their risk. They, they lower your risk. They elevate their risk. And they're all in the business now of, of, it seems like, policing in America is just like every, I'm not saying this is absolutely true, but it seems this way. Every cop just wakes up and says, I don't care what I got to do. I just want to get home tonight. 
And if that means signing up for a no-knock warrant with a very, very spurious evidence, it seems to me, against someone who doesn't have a track record, a, a, a without a criminal record, you have no real reason to believe that this person is fundamentally violent. You just know they have a gun. That's all you need. You know they have a gun, and so you're going to amp it up right away. You're going you're gonna to raise the cost of this engagement significantly for the person that you're going after. The suspect, not the criminal, the suspect. Brianna Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, were asleep in their apartment when just before 1 a.m. on March 13th, three plainclothes officers with the Louisville Metro Police Department arrived to execute a search warrant in a drug case. That's when you do that. 1 a.m., plainclothes, you show up. The two believed their apartment was being broken into when police busted through the door. And it's another thing. It's for drugs. It's for drugs. It's You're not even going after a crime. This is not a crime. This is a state-sanctioned assault on personal use. That's all this is. This is terrorism. This is terrorism. This is an attempt to use terrorism to stop you from doing behaviors that they don't want you to do. Even though you don't directly harm others, it's because in there, what they want to do is they want to control the aggregate. So if it could potentially damage aggregates, they're going to try to preclude to to prohibit it not only that but they know the pores because we live ground down lives we're much more likely to use drugs and if we are more likely to use drugs and if we prohibit drugs that makes it easier for us to control the pores with these laws that's all that drug laws are drug laws by the way also born from racism their first drug laws started as a means to control certain groups uh, the, the the marijuana laws emerged because blacks and Mexicans smoked uh, marijuana white people didn't really smoke marijuana a lot back then allegedly and therefore if they made those drugs illegal they weren't targeting the white folk they were just hitting the blacks and the Mexicans and it made it easier for them to racistly target people this is where drug laws come from. This is where gun laws come from. The first gun laws were aimed at preventing slaves from having guns. Make sure, hey man, we got to make sure the slave, you know. But some slaves needed to have guns for various reasons. For, like, if they were hunting, if they were trapping or something. And, and, they, and they had very specific rules and regulations as far as how a slave could have a gun. And they had to have papers and all kinds of... This is where the, all of this comes from. All of these types of laws are aimed wholly at controlling the 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 pores at, at at enabling the citadelians to interfere whenever they want with anyone by having these types of laws on the books then crump delivered a powerful call for activism uh crump we have to remember that black women lives matter too equally and so if you ran for Ahmed, you need to stand for Bree because when you look at these two cases and the issue, it's just unbelievable. Never have I seen two cases, Joy, that's such a vis- vi- vivid distinction of self-defense in black and white. When you think about the killers of Ahmed, Ahmad Arbery, who executed him in broad daylight, there was a video, and when the police came to them, they said self-defense. And when they said that, they were not arrested. They were allowed to leave and go home and sleep in their beds peacefully for 10 weeks. But then when Kenny Walker, who was in bed with Brianna, when the police came in in plain clothes, we have to remember that they did not announce themselves. They called 911. They believed that it was a home invasion, that they were going to be burglarized. And so Kenny fired a single shot and then police shot over 20 rounds. I mean, from the front door, from the back window, from the patio. They were so reckless, Joy, that bullets went into their neighbor's apartments. Yeah, this is the cops. They don't, they don't care. They have so little accountability. These cops that did this. This is these these cops should be handed over to this 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 man's family to this woman's family and they should decide what to do with the cops it's up to them they have total license to do what they want yeah you're at their mercy now you you had no mercy on on their family member now you get no mercy if they want to give you mercy that's up to them but it's up to them you're going to have to go before them and plead for your life that's the way it should be at least I think that's the way it should be. There's there's so little accountability to these police when they do things like this. They will get paid leave at the very most. And, and most likely, nothing will happen to any of these cops. 
and they'll still be out there. The same police that did this, the same human individuals, don't call them police, these individuals, these human beings, you and I, fellow poors, by the way, almost, I'm sure, fellow, you're not going to get a citadelian that's going to be working the cop job. These are all the poors, fellow poors, doing the bidding of the citadelians for their own petty aggrandizement. They get very little for it, though. Again, their their perception of living the good life is is diluted because they're we're all basically living in a giant shit bowl, and some of us are on top of the shit, and we think that's a good life, and most of us are swimming in the shit, and and so we're looking at the people that are top of the shit, and we're looking at them and we're saying, well, look at those privileged people, when meanwhile the Citadelians are deciding whether or not to flush. <laughs> that's the reality we live in. And these people, these, these, these meat machines, nothing will happen to these people. And the right, because, because you can't get, let go your heuristic institutional instincts to diminish blackness in your mind. Blackness is American. I mean, especially African-American blackness is not the same as African. There's, there's a lot of difference between the types of uh, African people groups as compared to the, the, the African people group in America, which we call, you know, the, the hyphenated African American. Uh, that 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 the, the these folks are distinctly Americans. Americans through and through. Like yeah, they are America. So you keep being quiet at the wrong times, righty rights. If you if you on this issue alone, you got other issues that, that I don't think a lot of black Americans go along with the right on, but this issue alone, you stand with black America consistently on this issue, strongly on this issue, and you will go, I don't know how far, but you'll go, it'll go very far at least towards bringing black America into your world in, the, in this area, for, for, for black America to stop fearing the the fear mongers that keep pre preaching gun violence gun violence gun violence there's gun violence because you are disarmed and if you try to defend yourself with guns that you have even though it's you're not supposed to have them they'll get you you'll go to jail and you know this so you're paralyzed and the people in your community that have decided to go the the, the quote-unquote lawless route they know this. They know you're unarmed. You're sitting ducks. The reason you have gun violence is because you don't have enough guns. And by that, I mean the criminals have plenty of guns. They don't need any more than they have. And by criminals, I mean if you're dealing drugs, that doesn't make you a criminal to me. If you're dealing drugs and in the, in the process of dealing drugs, you're shooting and robbing people, the shooting and robbing is what makes you the criminal. I don't care why you're doing it. That's the part. So... And the people that are dealing drugs, the ones that are doing that, yes, they're criminals. The criminals have plenty of guns. We'd want them not to have guns. The people who are not criming have no guns. They're victims. They're sitting ducks. They're unarmed, and the police don't even go in those areas to protect them. That should be an outrage to white, conservative, pro-gun America. Our black brothers and sisters are unarmed. How are we still putting up with this? This is a crime against humanity. Free black America. Lift the gun laws from off of their necks. Let them defend themselves. They'll clean this crap up in no time. No time. That's my theory. And I think I'm going to end this uh, section here. And no, that is not a freak out, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. That is totally within the realms of, nope, nope, not a freak out. So we're still heading towards 14 days, just so you know. Not a freak out. Now, coming up next is the talk focus. And the talk focus for today is neck tattoos that read your mind. But I do want to say this. I'll say this before I leave this. That this was, I'll say that I, was, I wasn't even close to a freak out. I was in the neighborhood, though. I, I had stumbled into the neighborhood and I started to see some some angry faces in windows as I was driving down the street. I was like, wait, am I in a neighborhood of freak out? I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> so I backed out. I backed out of freak out land. I didn't, I didn't go there. But uh, I, I think that this, this warranted the level of, of viscerality 
uh, that I added to it, and it was well within the range of, uh, I'm going to say, righteous viscerality. So if you're if you're on the right and you're listening to this, just just stand up for Black America for a change, and you might just change the world. Well, I didn't even change any of the scenes. I just changed it to that one. But you know what? As it as it worked out, I'm actually okay with that. That actually kind of looked good for that. So that kind of fit for me. I don't know. I kind of liked it. All right. Let's get to the. Uh, Gotta get to the to the third segment. Oh, I didn't even say what the. Th oh yeah, I did say it. That's right. All right. So this is the last segment of the first half of the show. So let's get ready in three, two, one. This is a talk focus for Frico Talks the News for Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com and our, our top focus for today is neck tattoos that read your mind. That's right. Neck tattoos that read your mind. That's what we're going to get to today. So let's. Oh, yeah. The mark of the tattooed neck beast is coming. Folks. And it will be able to read your mind and control every part of you. <laughs> no, it will not. It will be able to monitor your biologicals and it offers multiple useful medical applications. And no, it's not beastie at all. It's actually maybe kind of cool. Now, this is not the actual tattoo in question, but I felt like it fit. Uh, you do what you do. You do what you do. This is art. This is news art. It's what you do. This is news art. Brain wave, uh, this is from digitaltrends.com, an excerpt. Brain wave reading temporary tattoos could take wearable tech to the next level. Now, which is better, neck tattoos that read your mind or brainwave reading temporary tattoos could take wearable tech to the next level. Digital trends, call me, call me. If you pay me enough, I'll write your headlines for you. If researchers at Austria's Graz University of Technology and a couple of other European research labs have their way, head tattoos may become the norm. Mind reading, electrode sporting, head tattoos. And like the old joke about the waiter and the fly in the main man's soup, we're all going to want them. I don't get it. I don't get it. This is stupid. This doesn't make sense. I got to stop and pause for this. Head tattoos may become the norm. Great. Mind reading, electrode sporting head tattoos. And like the old joke about the waiter and the fly in the man soup, we're all going to want them. I don't get it. Who thinks that head tattoos in and of themselves are horrible? I mean... You might not prefer to have one, but it's not the same thing as finding a fly in your soup. I'm sorry. I can't give that to you. I, I can't. The fly in the soup, the joke, the joke in the fly in the soup, it's that it's totally gross and disgusting, and the waiter is just sloughing you off like, 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 p p passing it off as like a, an exclusive treat that he dropped in your soup that he doesn't want to let anybody know your special treatment. No, there's no comparison. I wonder if after you wrote this article, you look back and you're like, oh, man, I didn't really, that didn't really land. I mean, I've done that. So I'll give you a pass. Before we get any further, no, the tattoos aren't permanent. We use temporary tattoos like the ones for kids. Like the ones for kids. Speak for yourself. I use temporary tattoos all the time. Uh, no, I don't. I'm just kidding. Essentially, the same that you would use to transfer a cartoon or a drawing for creative purposes onto your skin. Francesco Greco, associate professor at the <coughs> University's of Institute of Solid State Physics, told Digital Trends. We use the standard tattoo paper as a substrate and then print on top of it circuits made out of conductive polymer using an inkjet printer. The recipient sticks one or more of these adhesive tattoo electrodes onto their scalp. The, tattoo, tattoo, the tattoos can then be used to record high-quality Electroencephalography, 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 brain signals fresh off the scalp. No, no. 
In contrast to gel electrodes, there is no need for a liquid interface and the tattoos cannot dry out. Even hairs growing through their ultra-thin membrane don't stop them from <laughs> effectively performing their job. That's just the, that's just, just scratches at the surface of the potentials for a delightful product such as this. We use the standard tattoo paper as a substrate and then print on top of its circuits made out of conductive polymer using, wow. So I mean, what do you, does it does it does it look like anything? Tattoos can then be used to record high quality brain signals fresh off the scalp. Essentially, right now, it's it's not really controlling you. Just it's just basically a recorder of of data, and the data is your mind. It's your mind at work. Now. As we begin to understand how memory is stored into cells, and then we understand like the internal structures of how, like if we learn the code for what makes a memory a memory, this string of code is a walk code, walk like this, what, you know, like, like game programming, game code. We could literally engineer human beings to be what they want to be by creating in them the type of memories that would build the heuristic institutions that would make them who they want to be. So this is what the tattoo looks like. The recipient sticks one or more of these adhesive tattoo electrodes onto their scalp. The tattoos can then be used to record high quality Brain signals. Let's see. I'll just say high quality brain signals. That's enough. Yeah. E even. E yeah. W well, the tattoo electrodes are not exactly invisible. Anyone shaved bald and sporting a small circuit board glued to their head has a funny habit of being conspicuous. Not really. Not today. I mean, that may have been true like last week, but not anymore. After this past week, I think that everyone can say that anybody walking down the street with a get up like this is like, oh, Friday or Thursday or whatever day it is. You just look at them and you say, you just, that's just your way of acknowledging that's life now. Uh, it's kind of acknowledging, okay, I acknowledge that it's a little bit of a difference, but I also acknowledge now that that difference is now to the point where, oh, yeah, this is a thing now. Well, I'm, I'm fine with this now. And I think that's where we're at with this. So if we see somebody walking down, we're going to look at that instantly and think, uh, not there's a fly in my soup, but it's nothing to do with flies and soups because this is, this is not this is not a distraction, a detraction. It's not a, uh, it's it's not it's not poop and liquid, so to speak, because the fly flies eat poop, so that's poop. It's poop in your liquid. This is poop in the liquid. This is this is a glorious display of the power and might within you to possess the capacity to muster the resources to have this tool married to your your skull that will enable you to become more self-aware of your own processes which you can then use to condition yourself more in keeping with what you want to be rather than what you actually are and I do believe that human beings have tremendous capacity to go far beyond what they are and to become what they want to be. To literally, like, I, I have this idealistic view of myself and I totally fail. And then you have a mechanism like this. Again, as I keep saying for tech in general, especially this type of invasive tech that owns your personal data, so to speak. Well, literally. That you would want to be decentralized processes, technologies, open source technologies in which the individuals have as much sovereign. Well, I hate that word sovereignty as much stewardship because sovereignty kind of implies ownership. And I don't believe ownership is actually biologically, materially or philosoph philosophically possible. I believe stewardship is as close as we can get to ownership. Stewardship is an acknowledgement that you don't hold on to anything with permanence, <clears throat> but it does give you some level of, of, dare I say it, rights as a steward of whatever resources and whatever you have around you. Uh, but anyway, uh, be that as it may, 
the the whole notion of of being able to engineer the self is fascinating i want it i love it i've always i will say since i was a kid i've kind of developed a habit of assumptions that i can be what i want to be not but i understood if i want to be what i want to be that it's a deliberative it's a work man it's a work it's it it's discipline it's 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 drills little 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 drills that i prepared for myself to try to move myself to at the time i didn't use the phrase heuristic institutions but i was essentially that's what i was really working on i understood what I call now the heuristic institutions, I understood the individual's capacity to make oneself anew is is not entirely but but significantly mostly limited or or expanded in opportunity by their capacity to condition the heuristic institutions within them. The the, the parts of themselves that produce the most reflexive, impulsive, emotion initiated actions. And with that in mind, I look at this as something which is highly, highly encouraging. And I am very much looking forward to seeing more developments with this, with all of the caveats that I gave it. And I would totally sport this thing, not just for health reasons. Now, for health reasons, this thing could do a lot. I, I could I, I could see even for myself, this would be incredibly useful. All the weird maladies that I suffer from that no one seems to ever figure out. If I had a mechanism like this that could so fully really process. And again, it, 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 would, would, I, would I want that done? Would I allow that to be done in situations in which... It's being administered by a central hub, and I know the data is going to a central repository. I don't think so. I don't think I'd sign up for that. But if I, if it was uh, delivered in a decentralized manner, and in in, in in the tech was uh, not centralized, not controlled by a select few, I would be totally embrace this. I'd want this. I'd want this in my life. I'd want to have all the knowledge that I. Well, maybe. Well, I would ultimately want to have all the knowledge even though to some degree i would be really kind of frightened to possibly learn oh by the way you have a ticking time bomb even though they won't discover this you have three months to live nothing we can do about it <laughs> you toast i don't know that's probably that's possible but i mean i guess you got to face that possibility that'd be kind of scary but i think i'd still do it I'd, uh, i would still do it so there you go that's the end of this Talk, the focus coming up next is our talk feature, and our talk feature is the White House threatens to liberate research from paywalls, but it's just a tease. I don't know. This picture just seemed really perfect for this. I don't know why. Just the whole, just heart heartfelt, heartwarming, just the whole, and all Michael Jordan and the crying, and it just, it just seemed to fit the title, which I wrote, the White House threatens to liberate research from paywalls, but it's just a tease. Well, that's coming up after the break. So stay tuned because there's more. There's more on this channel, the Action Bots of YouTube channel, if you're watching there, and there's more on the show if you're watching the live stream on DLive.tv. Freako. Oh, I haven't done that. Ah, crap, crap, crap. What, what, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know what I need. I need, I need to use the transition. There we go. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. We're good. All right. Well, we got to the part of the show where I do the any outy thing. So I'm going to do that any outy thing right now. And that is the any outy thing is with the water, the liquidation. The liquid goes in, the liquid goes out. So I get a little bit more concentration of liquid going in because of the dryness and whatnots. And oh, by the way, just so everybody who has been following along, my acid reflux, I would say the it is it is improving. I still have issues still getting dry coughs it's, you know when when i remember because i have acid reflux i often have the dry cough because of the agitations and so <laughs> i don't know how many times i dry cough it's like oh this shit coronavirus for you 
And who knows? Maybe I have coronavirus right now. I have no idea. But dry cough is like part of my life. But it's been much better over the last couple of days. So let's hope that trend continues. And with that, folks, I say, I say, well, I bid you, I bid you temporary adieu. I bid you, I, I bid you temporary adieu.
don't want to describe to you what happened during the break, but uh, there was an encounter with something that uh, caused a coughing fit. <clears throat> I don't know how many times I end up with a coughing fit during the break, but I mean, not more often than not, but more often than I would care to. It's like, uh, it's almost at this point, it's like I have a, a psychological thing. All right, you're not going to have a coughing fit or anything right before the break this time. And then it's like, it's almost like a wish fulfillment or a, a, a prop, self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> I'm building heuristic institutions which are gearing my body to have a coughing fit at such and such a period of time because it's so paranoid it's going to happen now because it's happened like this is like the fourth time I think it's happened <coughs> since I've been doing the show. Was in the scale thing is not that much, but anyway, I'm back. I'm here. I'm still alive. Everything's fine. And I tell you what, for all of those that are concerned already, because I'm sure I said some stuff, especially for those of you that love the cops, you don't like. I'm sure you don't like what I have to say about policing. Just so you know, I not in any way, shape, or form this show, nor do I in any way, shape, or form. <coughs> advocate for violence as as a means of uh, recourse regarding how it is that we challenge the injustices currently going on in the world i civil disobedience is one thing but acts of violence i just i'm i'm just telling you i'm just telling you it's just you're just going to keep creating the same type of vehicles of power <coughs> that psychopaths have all the advantage in participating in so you're just going to create one group of site. We're going to replace. Basically, what you'll end up doing is you'll replace some of the surface, the visible psychopaths with new visible <laughs> psychopaths. But fundamentally, most of the people behind the psychopaths will still be there. That's pretty much what you'll end up if you go down that path. So for very pragmatic reasons alone, I am vehemently, violently, violently opposed to violence as a means. Of, okay, that's good. I'm going to do that. I think that I'm violently opposed to violence. <laughs> there you go. So I'm violently and vehemently opposed to violence as a means of uh, of creating the consensual <coughs> exchanges that I've been preaching on the show. I guess preaching's a good word for it. With all that in mind, I do not like policing as an institution in America at all. I think it's fundamentally un-American at this point, and I think police officers... You are us. You are one of us. You're one of the poor. I'm just begging for you to wake the freak up and realize that you're being played too. Your your lives are being diminished as well. You're not making out much better than, than us. <clears throat> so you need to snap out of it and just stop following all these orders. Come to discern what the Bill of Rights really are and limit your actions according to that, no matter what your bosses tell you. You do that. You do that. And you'll change the world, at least as far as <coughs> moving us towards consensual exchange will be concerned. I mean, I'm not saying that'll ever happen. I mean, chances of that'll happen are slim to none. But there it is. I, I can't say I never made, I never said to you, or nobody ever said to you, listen, dudes, there's a way. Nobody wants to kill you. Nobody wants your lives to be destroyed. Nobody wants you to stop being part of America. But but stop following orders. <coughs> Be, join American, we uh, we American pores, because you are we American pores. So, I know you you cop folks, you folks that really love the polices and the policings and whatnots, and, and you probably don't like hearing the stuff I say, but for you, for you specifically, this particular moment, I say this. Warning, when I fear you're about to be exposed to a storm that might have been a business for a limited capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in life learned young. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific groups, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your prior range of view of the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firmly held. We do not apologize for anyone in We do not apologize for daring to express our views and questions of what we believe is and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frigo attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. You know, that's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the plan generally is that I talk about the news without freaking out. <coughs> and that's what... <coughs> pardon me. Wow. That came from a gomber deep down within. A gomber deep down within rose from within. Well, anyway. Let's get back to the show. Let's get ready. We're going to do our talk feature next. And I've got that puppy lined up and ready to go. So 
we don't. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, we don't. We don't need to delay it. And we'll start recording in three, two, one. This is a talk feature for Frico Talks the News on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Our feature for today, the White House. Oh, I got the wrong. Why does that say news poem? Ah, I see what happened here. Aha. <coughs> All right, no problem. The White House threatens to liberate research from paywalls, but it's just a tease. In the field of research, U.S. tax dollars contribute <coughs> to the creation of 200,000 plus research papers a year. Currently, U.S. policy allows for the researchers to create paywalls that give access to these same papers. In a teasing gesture, the Trump administration recently hinted it might soon start to make these researchers publish their papers to the public. Public dollars. Public disclosure. <clears throat> and this is an excerpt from sciencemag.org. Will Trump White House tear down journal paywalls? Many anxiously await a decision. Scientific publishers, universities, <coughs> librarians, and open access advocates are waiting anxiously to see whether the Trump administration will end a long-standing policy and require that every scholarly article produced with U.S. funding be made immediately free to all. Immediately free to all. Such a mandate has long been fiercely opposed by some publishers and scientific societies that depend on subscription revenues from journals. But critics of paywalls argue they are expensive and outmoded and that tearing them down is the best way to advance scientific research. On the 6th of May, the deadline passed on a request from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy or public comments on ways to expand public access to the fruits of federally funded research, including published papers, data, and computer codes. In February, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy asked for input on the benefits and challenges of making the roughly 220,000 papers produced annually by U.S. funded researchers immediately free on publication and on effective approaches to making that happen. And then there you go and you can click on the article and you can see. So so the Trump administration is teasing. This is what it's doing here. Look at him. He's the little tease. Such a little teasy boy. And see the teasy boy is this Michael Jordan. Why is Michael Jordan crying? Why? Why is he tearful? It is because he knows that this is a tease. He knows that this man is not going to deliver the full set. This is just going to be a peck and a go. He's going to be a peck. He's going to hand over his wallet. He's going to take his wallet, spend it on a whole bunch of stupid things, and then come back with his wallet empty. And then and then he's going to leave. There's going to be no no overall payoff. No, no, no complete consolidation and cohabitation with the whole offering. This will not deliver the goods for Michael. MJ will be left. He'll be left with nothing. And he knows it. And he knows it. And yet, even though he's, he's crying, he wouldn't be crying if he, like, sussed the mounds. Like, oh, I know this guy's teasing. I ain't getting nothing from this. I'm walking away. It'd be, he'd be like, he'd boss it. He'd own it. But he knows deep down. He can't resist. He can't resist. And that's what this is. This is old Donnie boys like, look at everybody, look, I'm going to make this possibly, maybe possibly, look, everybody, get excited, get excited, write the stories, write the articles, yeah. And then three months later, everybody's forgotten about it, and Science Mag writes an article that nobody really pays attention to. Well, I do, Frico, Frico does, because Frico gets, what I do is I find those gems, those gems that, uh, that, that no one else finds. That's that's my claim. I, and I also cover the gems that everybody else finds, too. I 
do those too. But <clears throat> this is one of these examples where nobody's talking about this, but it's pretty significant. It would be very significant <coughs> uh, if these papers were suddenly open to the general public. I can't imagine what I'd be like, boy in a candy shop with that. I mean, I get it. I wouldn't know what the aisles meant and what the candy meant, but I would enjoy it anyway. I'd be like, I don't get it, but okay, I'm eating it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm cutting and pasting. I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a bundle of wonders that I would get from that. Imagine, though, the am, the quote-unquote amateur scientist. And, oh, amateur, I don't, th I don't think that's a pejorative. I'm an amateur in a lot of ways. Amateur scientists, amateur engineers, whatevers, if they have access to this top-level knowledge, that would be pretty incredible. So, as you, you could probably gather, I am... 100% totally for unlocking. I don't really care, publishers. Uh, you know how I here, 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 you know, as it so happens on this part right here, I should transition, but let me read this first. Content free to use so long as Frico.com, Frico and Frico.com are identified as the creators. See, my now I do this fundamentally because I feel like I should represent what I, what I. What I claim as far as my view of IP and patent laws and whatnots, but strategically, I believe that if if anybody ever, if I ever start to build an audience and people start to use my content, I think what people are going to quickly discover is that my letting my content be used by multiplicities of individuals will have an overall tremendous net result for me in my life. I will have free marketing. It, whatever money they make, it's like, okay, that's my budget that I spent for that advertising. And I didn't even have to spend a dime. They took all the risk. I assumed all the cost, did all the marketing for me. Okay, they made their money great. Then they got paid for marketing. That's the way I view it. And <clears throat> these publishers, they obviously don't see the world that way. So I don't really care. Screw that. I don't care if they can't make a living. It's just because you can't make a living doing that particular thing is not a reason for us to continue to diminish the opportunity for significantly more individuals. Imagine how, what opportunities we would create for human beings that have the capacity to fully, like for me, it's a candy shop uh, that uh, I don't get it, but it tastes good. It'll taste good. It'll taste great. I know that, but I won't get it. I won't get it. Not even at a layman's level, probably. <laughs> but other folks, they'll be in that candy shop and they'll, oh, this is the 12 threes, 12 seven, nine. I always wanted to know what was behind that. Now I understand this changes everything. And then they go into their their labs and and they produce the uh, the little mini rail guns that can be created by anyone in their home with 3D printers using basic materials. It's a fantasy, okay. I'm, we're nowhere close to this, and they and they and they make that freely available to everyone. They they open source the tech that allows people. They don't have to understand how you did it. All they gotta understand is they plug that into their three D printer. They got these resources, and they plug that in, and then bada boom, bada bing, Bob's your uncle. Everybody has a railgun that pretty much uh, democratizes the force pretty instantly. I mean, that would be an extreme example, but yeah, these are the types of things. So if you are, if you're on my side, if you want to democratize tech, democratize a tight I take it all off grid, so to speak, allow, allow there to be, there's still grids. We still need grids. We still need large scale structures. I'm sure there's still, especially when it comes to managing resources, there's still national and world structures. We're probably still going to need to whether we maybe we don't preserve because maybe none of the structures that exist at those levels today we would want to preserve but if we don't preserve them we'll have to replace them with other how whatever they look like national world structures so so there's still going to be reason for the grid i'm not anti-grid i'm just saying that significantly the 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 core dependence of your dailies ideally even for a nation state that wants to be invincible like no other nation state could possibly ever invade it, ever challenge it, 
Yeah, not not as far as invasion. Not as um, we're not talking about. I don't want. I'm not trying to build a offensive juggernaut. I'm trying to build a defensive juggernaut. <clears throat> A, jugger, a defensive juggernaut, a community, a, a 300 plus million community of, 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 of SJWs and America's Firsters all able to find structures to coexist in thanks to the Bill of Rights. If we can create that, if we can have the, the peoples of the world regularly coming into our world lands, the best of the best because... I don't mean the best. I mean the best. Well, I guess it, as it way, it, it's unfortunate. It is only going to be the best of the best. We actually don't just want the best of the best because some of these people that are not the best of the best, even if it's not them, maybe they're too far gone. Well, they'll never be able to be built up to have this opportunity to fully have been what they could have been. But their children could. So, you know, I, I, I want America to basically continue to be the place where the world comes until eventually in my little fantasy America is is a defensive juggernaut, not an offensive one, and it and it shows the world that you you can you can have a successful, happy nation state, even one that satisfies to some degree your citadelians. They're always going to have some degrees of citadelians, except in in this world, the citadelians are are millionaires, not billionaires. Probably there are probably very few billionaires in this world, not because of any laws. No, I don't believe in laws restricting anything as far as what you can earn. I do believe in uh, uh, if you if you have the structures that that basically inevitably make it more difficult because of competition alone, competition that's not artificially impeded by uh, laws and regulations that significantly favor one particular faction or another. That uh, yeah, you can you 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 can have that world a world. In, in which the rest of the world that's still operating under a, a far more authoritarian models will, will no longer have a justification for their very lives. I mean, that's a fantasy. So I took it out to the fantasy level, and I think I'm going to end it there. That's the end of this half of the show. Well, it's actually more than a half because it's three segments and there's two segments on the other side. But let's just go with that. Let's just say that is the end of this half of the show. And uh, coming up next after, or, or, or excuse me, it's not the end of the half of the show. I'm sorry. We're not at the break, okay? We're not at the break. We're actually coming up to the last section of the show. We're at, wow, I, I forgot I took a break. Wow. Time flies, folks. Time flies. Coming up next is going to be the news poem, and the news poem today is going to be, My Digital Zen Newscaster Just Exploded on Live State TV. Whoo! Oh boy, I really gotta gotta learn this uh, train changing transitions here. All right, so we're getting ready for the last segment of the show. I'm gonna take some some coffee in me. Wake up! I gotta say, I really hope that I see some improvement in numbers to justify doing the show. This is when ideally I want to do a show at 8 a.m. for me personally, physically. But I won't do it at this time if it's not ideally as far as hoping to even catch any any audience. So we'll see. If, if my numbers go from 1 to 2 average as far as live stream views, <laughs> I'll be like, wow, you are a rock. You, 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 you've doubled your audience in a week by shifting your time. That's how I'll couch it. I won't give the I'll just give the, the numbers that I'll give is the... 100 percent doubling the doubling of my audience in a span of one week just by changing the time i'll be a genius genius and and it'll justify oh oh well my physical uh, harmony is aligned or my sip my physical needs are harmonized with my market needs that's what I'll tell myself. So, folks out there, make sure if you're watching this, if you just happen to stumble upon this, you drunk one early morning and you're like, there's nothing crazy on at 8 in the morning. Oh, wait, look, this thing looks crazy. And if you're one of them people, you're listening right now and you know who you are, be sure you share and like and comment and spread the word so that uh, I get the illusion. Just if I get like six or seven people on this thing in the overall, I will have 
That'll be the justification. I'll have all the justification that I need to do this for the rest of my life. All right? Six or seven human beings could fundamentally change my life right now. Make it happen. Share, like, make this boy's dream come true. That he can, yeah, do that. All right. Let's get to the last section of this uh, fun show. And that's going to be our... Uh, that's going to be our, our uh, news poem here. Get this lined up, and we're going to record in three, two, one. This is the news poem for today for Frico Talks the News on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Our news poem for today is My Digital Zin Newscaster Just Exploded on Live State TV. News first, poem follows. China develops world's first, oh, this is from znews.india.com. Z, Z E E news.india.com. That's a new one that's shown up for me. China develops world's first 3D AI news anchor, which mimics human voice. Xinhao, a Chinese news agency, added an AI 3D news anchor to its lineup of virtual presenters, reported the Daily Mail. The Chinese Daily Mail, I believe. The AI 3D news anchor named Jin Xiaowi was jointly developed by Xinhao and search engine Sogu, which is a Chinese technology company specializing in web search. According to Sogu, the 3D anchor is modeled on Zhao Wanwei, a real-life reporter from the new, for the news agency. Her digital counterpart is brought to life by multimodal recognition and synthesis, facial recognition, and animation and transfer learning, reported the Daily Mail. So, you're not Zhao Wenwei. You are only Jin. Jin. Jin, Jin, Jin. Hear me now. Jin, Jin, Jin. Jin from Jin. Come on. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Come on. Yeah, come on. You know what? I don't care. I'm going to forget that I forget that. Don't ruin my poem. All right. Are y'all ready for the poem part? Because that was the news part. That was the poem part. And that's why it's a news poem. My digital Zen newcaster just exploded on live state TV. Zin etched across the skin jin the anthropomorphics in the stew jin the opera in the digitals jin oh jin the lips meander towards the coil of near girl sheen clean jin the party extols the virtues the drama undone no body in the body you hold Telling you the foreigners are destroying our failed plans. I mean, destroying. Des destroying our plans. Plans, Jin. Must control. The outer shell is hung with slightly out of reach, smooth. The mouth, it loads the words into a pattern of indifference flow. But no, but no, Jin. Tell me no, so I stay in my house. Jin. The moon spins her long threads of white jade strands into the spires that hold up Notre Dame until they don't. That load. But Jin could not yet report said document. Process. I am Jin. I put my mouth around the word illegal and a flash of the code suddenly compels me to explode. You cannot stop the signal. Darn it, that face didn't work. I was trying for it didn't I, I ended up doing a duck bill face? I don't know what that was. I was trying to go. I felt like I should be You cannot stop the signal. In my head, I don't know if you got that, but in my head, what happened there was uh, Jin was, I guess, some rebels got some code into Jin, and then at the at the at the at the moment that she was designed to, she spilled the beans. She just 
revealed all the secrets before they could shut her down. That's the scenario in my head. Yeah, I guess this is a cinepoetic as well. I should call this a cinepoetic too. This is my second cinepoetic I've ever written, I guess. I should call this a cinepoetic. And I got a little typo there too. I thought about as I got to that part, do I keep glossing over that? Or do I, I just, you know, I just want to load it right there. Ex exploded, exploded. Anyway, it's a, one of these happy mistakes because I like the way that looks, exploded. Exploded. And that's going to be the end of this segment, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you very much for watching this news post. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be the end of the show. I thank you very much for joining me in this show. I feel like uh went a little bit long on the first and second second segments. But all in all, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, f I feel like I'm getting a bearing on this, even though this show doesn't exactly reflect that yet. But I'm closing in, ladies and gentlemen, on becoming the greatest podcaster of all time. It's going to be one of these things where you're not going to see it, but on that Tuesday show, next Tuesday show, January, June 2nd. Actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna change things. I'm going to up things i'm gonna be bold i'm gonna say i'm gonna stick with monday now because monday june 1st is a very special day in my wife and i's life and i'm just going to say in a very delicate manner monday june 1st is a day that we have experienced with a very vivid memory and within recent years i won't say anything beyond that we experienced a day of interactions in multiplicities that produce the heights of the heights of the heights of the heights of the heights the, heights, the glory and the wonder and the all of uh, commingling and so it would be fitting to me if that was the day that I also became the greatest podcaster of all time so with that being said I am upping the ante and even though technically because Monday we didn't do a show because it was a Memorial Day holiday Technically, by all rights, in terms of the amounts of shows, Tuesday would be the day. I am putting this on me. I'm going to accelerate the plan. Monday, I will be the greatest podcaster of all time. Now, remember, Monday is the day that I become the greatest podcaster of all time, but it's another four weeks before the rest of the world discovers it. But it'll be about four weeks after that. Not about exactly, exactly four weeks. I've worked out the math. And uh, I think that I've developed a plan that was very realistic and, and humbling. It was humbling for me to design it in a way that it would take this long to get this far. But that is what it is. I design, that's part of the overall perfection of the plan, really, in, in, in simplest terms. So at, at that rate, I think it's time for me to say goodbye to all of you guys. I appreciate all of you very much. I appreciate uh, all of the people that took the time to watch the show and and also I particularly appreciate the people that did not take the time to watch the show really appreciate you love you love you all good night everybody Thank you for engaging with this material presented. As usual, remember your views, your suppositions do not make yourself human, nor do they make you subhumanize others. No humans were harmed in the making of the show, and we extend no wish of harm on anyone who hasn't directly harmed or threatened to harm on this person, no matter how reprehensible we find your views. We will see you in the next Frico Talks, where Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. <laughs>